Greetings, YouTube. The Doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and & Dragons. And welcome to the channel that takes power gaming to the next level. Today on the Doctor's Spell Prognosis, we are talking about the spell Animal Shapes. We're giving this spell an A, but not on its own merits. We're giving this a spell an A because of all the other things that you can do with it. If you tag team with your allies and your par adventuring party properly. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I've got another video out. All right, we're giving this an A, and it is only usable by druids. But there are some things about this spell that are quite broken if you really think about it. All right, it's an 8th level spell, has a casting time of 1 action, it has a range of 30 feet, which is not a great range, but it doesn't really matter. Verbal and somatic components. This is one thing I do have a little bit of difficulty with. It lasts for 24 hours, and it's a concentration spell. I'm not really sure how you're going to concentrate on something for 24 hours, but um, I guess it is what it is, and that's what it is. So your magic turns others into beasts. Now, the words in this, and there's a lot to unpack in this spell, but the words in this spell have a very specific rules as written meaning. So, choose any number of willing creatures that you can see within range. So, that means any willing creatures within 30 feet can be subjected to this spell. You transform each target into the form of a large or smaller beast with a challenge rating of 4 or lower. On subsequent turns, you can use your action to transform affected creatures into new forms. So you can transform them over and over and over again, as long as they're alive and they're creatures, because if they're not alive, they're not creatures anymore. And that term creature covers a whole lot. Okay, the transformation lasts for the duration for each target or until it drops to zero hit points or dies. You can choose a different form for each target. A target's game statistics are replaced by the statistics of the chosen beast, though the target retains its alignment and its intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. The target assumes the hit points of the new form, and when it reverts to its normal form, it returns to the number of hit points it had before the transformation. If it reverts, so it's dropping to zero, then the excess, it's got the the wild shape kind of armor. As long as the excess damage doesn't reduce the creature's normal form to zero hit points, it isn't knocked unconscious. Creature is limited to the actions it can perform by the nature of its new form, and it cannot speak or cast spells. The target's gear melds into the new form. The target cannot activate, wield, or otherwise benefit from any of its equipment. Okay, this is the basic rules. This, the assumption that was made with this spell was that the druid would use this on the adventuring party when they needed to be like birds or they needed to swim or something like that. So in essence, you could tr turn everybody into a fish if you needed to swim somewhere or birds if you needed to fly somewhere or something like that. That's kind of the basic standard use of this spell. Now let's look at the creatures that you can turn into. Now it says... Large or smaller, and challenge rating four or smaller. So all of the, these are in order of challenge rating beasts from the highest down to the lowest. We start getting into the fours here with elephant. Elephant is a huge, so that's out. Giant coral snake, I don't have ghosts of sand marsh, so that's out. Giant subterranean lizard is huge, so that's out. Giant walrus is huge, that's out. So we go to page two. Stegosaurus, obviously that's huge, that's out. Two-headed Plesiosaurus is large, okay. Two-headed Plesiosaurus, this is a creature that we can turn things into. It has 100 hit points, it can hold its breath, it's got two heads, so it's got advantage on all this stuff. It has multi-attack, two attacks, it does have a land speed of 20 feet even though it is a, a creature in the ocean as a swim speed. Two attacks, 3d6 plus 4 piercing damage. Uh, with a plus 6, that's about as best as you're going to get for a challenge rating 4 creature. Because um, it's got a proficiency bonus of plus 2. 
So reach of 10 feet. So this is pretty good. That's not bad. What else we got here? Uh, from the Shrine of Tacoma. This is huge. So that's out. Ankylosaurus is huge. So that's out. Awakened White Moose. That's large, 68 hit points, charge, multi-attack with antlers and hooves, does 2d8 plus 4, 2d4. So still the, the plesiosaurus is better. Where was the plesiosaurus? Oh, two-headed plesiosaurus. Giant scorpions, uh, giant eel only has, well, it has a five foot, so that's not great, but has a jolt of lightning, it's large, giant scorpions are large, 52 hit points, blind sight, uh, it's got three attacks, two claws, and a sting, these are only plus four to hit, because it's only got a, a strength of 15, not sure why that is, giant snapping turtle is large, it gets one attack, um, spotted lions are huge, so that's out, Allosaurus is large. It's got a bite attack or a claw attack, which does okay damage. It can pounce. So this is like a big velociraptor. And so on and so forth. So you see this, um, the way that it, it pulls out. I would probably pick the two-headed Plesiosaurus or the Awakened White Moose or the Giant Scorpion, just because they all have multi-attack. Now, um, because we can choose any number of willing creatures. So again, this is a concentration cell, but if you have somebody else in your party that can cast one of these conjure spells, you could conjure a whole slew of animals that you can all of a sudden animal shape. You summon face spirits that take the form of beasts. These are creatures. These are still creatures, and they are friendly to you and your companion, so you can make them willing. You can summon eight, one quarter or lower. It doesn't matter. The num what matters is the number. You get the eight, one quarter or lower, which are usually small or tiny. And um, if you cast this at higher level, um, you choose one of the summoning options above and twice as many for a fifth level slot, three times as many for a seventh level slot, and four times as many for a ninth level slot. So if you've got a, this is castable by druids and rangers. So if you've got another druid in the party who casts this at fifth level, you're going to get 16, 16 of these beasts. You get them in a 30 foot range, plop the spell down on them, all of a sudden you've got 16 awakened white moose, okay? How about this spell? Animate object. Objects come to life at your command. Choose up to 10 non-magical objects, which in range that are not worn or carried. Medium counts as two objects. Large count as four. Huge count as eight. You can't animate a huge. Each target animates and becomes a creature in your control. As a bonus action, you can mentally command any creature you made. So these are all creatures. Again, choose any number of willing creatures. And you can make these creatures willing. And you decide what the action is. So you can make them willing. And you could do tiny or small. Ten of them. You got these guys. And you could change them into any one of this stuff that you want. Allosauruses. Um, there's probably a bunch of different stuff like giant owls and things that fly too. So on top of all that, on top of all that, you might have a twilight cleric in the party who, whenever a creature, including you, ends its turn in the sphere, you can grant that creature one of these benefits. Granite temperate. So this is twilight sanctuary. 1d6 plus your cleric level. If you got a cleric in your party and you're casting eighth level spells, that cleric is going to be dropping probably 19 points, 18, 19 points of temporary hit points down on all of these things. If you have an artificer in the party who happens to have the protector cannon, it, it that, that guy is going to be dropping down you can drop this down every round, so eventually you're going to max this out. Probably at that level, it's going to be like 12 or 13. So all of a sudden now you've got one of these beasts. You've got a bunch of these beasts. Let's just say it's giant scorpions. 
who now have, instead of having 52 hit points, they've got 70 hit points with the cleric or um, 64 or 65 hit points with the artificer. And you ju now you have your army. Now you have your army of beasts that you can use and you can continuously, continuously um, change them into different things the whole time. So you can choose a different object um, as long as the excess. So you can, you can continuously go on subsequent turns. You can use your action to transform affected creatures into new forms. All different. You can have half flying, half not flying. Lots and lots and lots of choices. So this is a great spell that you can combine with other spells and other members of your party to really make effects of it. Just need to sit down and talk with your group that you have this spell and what you can do with it. All right, that is what I got for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.